With an optimism that summer might be about to rear its head, I thought it was time to leave the shores and set out on a journey of discovery. I set sail for pastures new, travelled across land and sea to an island which offered all I ever yearned for. Golf and Guinness. Cue the Irish music. We're off to the Emerald Isle. We invite people in, we have a lovely little course, uh, it's not a high-end course, it's not a, an open championship on the road or anything, but we are off the beaten track, but it's well worth a visit to any group, it's a beautiful town, beautiful area. We're a welcoming club yeah. and that's what we try to, yeah. to portray the whole time. That And I joined here because of its friendly nature, uh, you're just a stranger here, but once uh, you come here on your own to play a few holes, uh, you, somebody will join you. You will never be left on your own unless you genuinely want to be left on your own. Right now I'm 85. I joined Boris in 1962. It's always been a friendly club from the very first time that I joined. I always had a good time here. Yeah, I loved it here. I still do, still do. And people who come here usually want to come back. Okay, I'll tell you, my name is Louis Cosgrave, anyhow. and. Um, in my early 80s now, still playing a bit of golf. Yeah, I'm a member in this golf club for probably uh, 40 odd years and enjoyed it. Never been a member of another club and it's a brilliant club, even though it's a nine hole golf club here. One time it used to be the best nine hole in, in Ireland. What makes it so special is it's such a friendly club, I'd say. And but still, after a game of golf, you can always come in and have a few drinks and a bit of a chat. And uh, basically, that's what golf is about, isn't it? I arrived at the small town of Boris on Sunday the 12th of May as a stranger, and I left as anything but. My goal was simple, play golf, take some photos, create a video. But this was not to be an ordinary episode. In fact, the next four days were about to be quite surreal. I'm not quite sure what happened, but this was a story of far more than just a golf club. So we're, we're in the middle of enjoying our round. This is an impromptu. I was just seeing you on the other fair. We were met in a bar the other evening. Can you tell me uh, what's so great about Boris Golf Club? Friendship, uh, laid back, very welcoming. That's, that's a theme we've heard throughout. And. Uh, Beautiful scenery. Absolutely. Yeah, I won't enjoy so your game, so I won't interrupt you any longer. I'll see you later in the bar. Okay. A lot of what you'll see in today's episode is as much about the people of Boris as it is about the golf club. Because although they don't know it, it is them that make it so special. But I suppose we'd better take a look around the golf course first. After all, that's why I was invited. You'll see a lot of people in this episode you've not met before, much like when I arrived in Boris. But very soon you'll understand why these people are so special and how the community and the golf club of Boris are so important to one another. One of the first things I'm learning here at Boris Golf Club is uh, you need to find a fairway because there, quite a few of them are quite tight off the tee. And if you go where I've just been, which is not too far off the beaten track, then you're going to need to start to be able to shape the ball a little. We fucked one round there, but uh, not going to make it to the green. Right, this uh, is a little awkward one, will probably demonstrate something that I'll talk to you about uh, very soon about Boris Golf Club. Right, now watch his swing. Watch his swing. Oh, I'm more than happy with that. But yeah, what I wanted to talk to you about was, again, just on this 9 old theme, there's this assumption that sometimes it can be, uh, you know, easy golf. It's certainly not. One thing about this golf course is the targets are very, very small. So. A long green, but very narrow on the third is the, pretty much the epitome of that. I think I better get me putty, you're not giving me that, are you? Well, again, the seventh green that we're just waiting to play is uh, a small green, 152 yards from the whites. And as I understand, I've spoke to a lot of members, this can be a bit of a card wrecker. It's so tiny, the target, that they're just, uh, well, glad to see the back of it and move on to hole eight. 
I think we better see how we get on. It's got a tiny bit, I think. Oh, yeah. You know what, at the moment these things just spin so much, you've got some new wedges, give PXC a bit of a plug there, but they're so spinny the wedge, he was out with Brendan earlier today and he had a practice with them and couldn't believe it either. Anyway, the better one to talk about is this backdrop, which is, I think, that is the Blackstairs Mountains and uh, it's the first time the sort of cloud has just lifted off it uh, in the last hour or so, so we can see that. If I've got that bit wrong then apologies to anyone connected with the golf club. But all around here, whichever way you look, and you'll have seen from the drone footage, it's uh, pretty spectacular. And it's again one of those golf courses where it's very much what you think of Ireland as being lush green, very picturesque, and no matter which fairway you walk down, loads of definition, lush green on the greens themselves, and uh, oh, it's just, uh, it's stunning to look at. So much attention is paid to the big clubs in Ireland, but there are plenty that are off the beaten track and Boris certainly falls into that category. And I'd love nothing more than you to pay this place a visit and support it. The people really do deserve it. Play the big courses, but add Boris into your next trip and stop by and say hello. You'll love the place. And if you don't, I'll pay the green fee myself. Right, six hole and uh, only, what's it play? 317 yards, or 317 metres, sorry. That's important, quite a bit different. Um, but again, you just, it's not, it's not super wide. I mean, I'm going with forward and I've chose to play that on a few occasions already. Once again, just trying to find a fairway um, because that's the kind of demand that uh, the course puts on your game. Off the tee, you'll see a lot of very mature tree-lined fairways and uh, leak it a little bit. I think I've already mentioned and yeah, a bit of problem. Anyway, let's see how this goes. Yeah, I'll be happy with that. There's a lot I like about uh, Boris Golf Club, but the six green complex, we'll call it, is probably my favorite bit. It's got great shaping. It's got lots of subtle little uh, uh, swales within the green itself and then it's well protected by a couple of uh, fairly decent sized bunkers so again a bit of a demand on your short game oh not bad now it wouldn't be an episode without photo of the week and your Tracy in the comments below I can't believe how uh, lucky we've been with the weather. It's been incredible in the days you've been filming. Uh, but I don't know whether you noticed from all the kind of interview little clips that you've seen so far. I'm not sure how this has been put together, but there's uh, a number of words that are quite prevalent in everybody's uh, sort of words. And that's about being welcoming, friendly. And uh, honestly, I can't believe just how well welcoming and friendly the people in general of Boris have been. It seems like we've part of the furniture, we've only been here a few days, but it's so welcoming, whether we're uh, in the clubhouse at Boris or our other 19th hole, which is Joyce's just down the road. Anyway, back to the golf. Yet again, it's those tree-lined fairways that provide a nice visually, visual shape of where you're trying to go. It's a little bit left, is it? Oh no, oh no, that's okay. That's okay, we might have a decent angle in. But you know what, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy as Larry, as they say. Stress-free walking down these fairways. There's no noise apart from the birds in the background. Sun shining. It's just, this is stress-free golf, I tell you. No wonder the uh, members are all walking around happy and jovial all the time. So I'll have a quick pint in the clubhouse. 
and then I wander up the road to Joyce's for a few Guinness and uh, I don't know what more can you ask for in life. I think as well sometimes we can be perhaps a little bit dismissive of nine old golf courses but uh, this is a tough cookie I tell you I've already said about the tee shot it's narrow but there's a lot of uh, long second shots in as well because I've been choosing to play forward to try and get the ball in a fairway but clearly that leaves you longer second shot in so persuade you to hit driver off the tee but then again that's the sort of chance you take but it's also the one bit that I do really like is that there's a number of different tee boxes so that when you play two loops of nine make up your 18 holes there's some holes that are significantly different in where they move the tee boxes um, so for example the ninth hole plays a par four first time round and then when you play it again uh, as 18 it's a very very different tee position which makes it into a par five so i love the fact that it almost feels in a number of them at least anyway that you are playing two very different holes well i'm gonna end it there I could go on forever, but I've been doing continual loops, I think. I don't know how many holes I've played today, but I've enjoyed every minute of it. In the backdrop there is another big mountain. I'm not sure of the name of that one, but I'm sure it means uh, something to the members of Boris. And uh, it's another great visual to end on. But not quite end, because I think you can guess where I'm going next. And uh, cue the music. So another late night and a good breakfast was needed. We were staying at Joyce's in one of their eight rooms. The breakfast was a belter and the perfect start to the day. Joyce's have eight rooms, all of which are superb and an absolute pleasure to stay in. But once again, it was our hosts, John and Mary Joyce, who made it extra special and clearly couldn't do enough for their guests. I was off for one more round, this time with Brendan Joyce, who borrowed my PXG driver and showed me how to use it. Once again, the sun was shining on this picture-perfect landscape. Now in an ordinary episode that would be me done, but Boris and its people are far from ordinary. Later that evening I was asked if I'd like to visit the stables of possibly the greatest national hunt trainer of all time. Willie Mullins is champion trainer of the year, trainer of the current Grand National and Gold Cup winners, he is a legend of the sport and was as welcoming as any other I met during this surreal few days. I'm still not sure if this really happened. On the drive back to Joyce's for one last evening, if they told me a leprechaun would be playing live in the bar, I'd probably believe them. And so we end this episode where it all started. Over to you, John Joyce. Passing by, I see friends shaking hands, saying, How do you do? When they're really saying, I love you. Where am I now?
Brendan Joyce asked for my help to give some love to Boris Golf Club and encourage others to visit. What he didn't realise was it is them who helped me. Helped me realise what life should be all about, what golf is all about, and how a golf club is such an integral part of a community and how important it is that they stay with us for many years ahead. I want to thank all the people of Boris who made my wife and I so welcome during our visit. And that final parting gift, heartburn.